Welcome, everyone, to the Semantic Universe Lecture Series. I'm Ben Hunt, and I'm joined by my daughter, Harper Hunt. Really happy to be here, Ben. Well, I asked Harper to be here for three reasons. The first reason is that we are doing this as a with a live audience, a live virtual audience, and I need Harper to help me out with that. So she's here first and, and foremost for that. Secondly, to be honest, sometimes I like talking to an actual person as opposed to just staring into the camera. So I'll be going back and forth doing a little bit of both. So thank you for being here for that, Harper. The final reason I ask Harper to be here is that she and my other three daughters, this is why I do all of this, um, all of it. So that's another big reason uh, to, to have you here, Harper. All right. Uh, I was trying to think how to start this <laughs> lecture series, presentation, idea fest on the semantic universe. And I actually wanted to start with something that my father did for me, Harper, mm -hmm. which was, I, I must have been 13 years old. And we went up to Washington, D.C. to go see the monuments and to go see the Smithsonian. In particular, the National Air and Space Museum had just opened, I think, the year before. You're, you're showing your age here, I, I know. I, I really am. Yeah, that that really was an am. old museum when I went. Exactly. Exactly. But to this day, I remember an exhibit they had at the Air and Space Museum, which was The Powers of Ten. And The, the Powers of Ten is a movie. It starts with zooming in on a person asleep on a picnic in Chicago. And then from there, it starts to zoom out. So every 10 seconds, as I recall, it zooms out by a power of 10 until ultimately the Earth is a speck, the sun is lost in our galaxy, the galaxy itself is lost in you know, all of space. And then what it does is it zooms in all the way back to the person asleep and then starts zooming in on his hand until the last image, again, every 10 seconds, going in at a power of 10 magnification. We're looking at, here, you know, I wrote it down to make sure I'd, 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 I'd get it right. A proton of a carbon atom within a DNA molecule in a white blood cell. So this is like a, a rendering of what we think that looks like, right? Or is this like the actual? Well, thing? when we get down to the proton, yes, it's definitely these okay. are all renderings, yeah, for, for 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 sure. But it it was so evocative; it's still around. You should absolutely see it if you get a chance. What I learned later was that the book, The Powers of Ten, was taken from, also had a section on time, mm -hmm. because time has this similar fractal scaling nature, where you know, as the, the, the book for this was, was showing, you know, one second is basically the, the time between human heartbeats. But as you go down into smaller and smaller increments of time, I mean, it's crazy stuff. The, you know, one millionth of a second is a strobe light flash. One thousandth of a second, the wing flap of a honeybee. Uh, one quadrillionth of a second is, is where chemical reactions take place. And then similarly, this book then pulls out for time in longer periods. Again, every power of 10. So that we go from a second to 10 seconds to a billion seconds to a trillion seconds. And what I found about all of this was that it made me think about the nature of reality. Because all of these concepts that we're talking about, we're so good at coming up with symbolic representations of things we can't imagine, either because they are so large and have such galactic, universal length periods of time. Things like, you know, we have these notions now of space-time, gravity waves, the... the all of these imagery that, that we're all familiar with on the very large, and similarly for the very small. Like this, this picture of what we think a bacteriophage looks like, right? And, and then it's 
it's a little war of the worlds, isn't it? Well, it, 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 it really is. And what I find so evocative about, about all of this is we believe all of it. And it's not that I don't believe it, right? But we'll never see this. We'll never feel any of this. But we understand it. All of these things have meaning to us. We use these words, and the, the, the meaning comes from the words, the symbols, which is what a word is, mm -hmm. right? It's a symbol. A language is a symbolic representation that we use as our effort to make sense of the world. What I really believe is that the human beings are sense-making organisms. Okay. And what one of the points of this lecture series is that, well, actually, all organisms are sense-making organisms. And ultimately, and this gets a little woo, I think the universe moves in a direction to make sense of itself. We can hold that thought. For now, I just want to, to understand or, or to try to communicate what I mean about abstraction and symbols and sense-making. So that we talk about time as an arrow. We talk about the concept of a before and an after. When we talk about matter, about things, we talk about mass. We talk about the particles mm -hmm. that make them up. Information, we talk about that's difference. There has to be an observer and there has to be an observed. It, making sense is another way of saying meaning. And semantics is just a $10 word that means meaning. What I'm saying is that time, matter, information, they all have meaning to us mm -hmm. because of our linguistic abstractions. Right, that the idea of scale, even that very fractal nature of expanding in time, expanding in space, and then going down really deep, that is meaning. So the, the actual substance only has meaning because of our words. It's how we make sense of reality. And that's what I mean about the semantic dimension. These things don't exist in our own heads without the meaning that we attach to it. Okay, I'm with, you, right. so, I'm with you, so you so far. far. I'm with you so far. Here's where it gets a little weird, because I think it's fair to say that if humans weren't around, time would still exist. Matter would still exist. Information would still exist. The semantic meaning, the symbolic abstractions they exist away from humans. This is not an anthropomorphic vision of the world where the, the only reason the universe exists is because humans are there to make sense of it. What I'm saying is that those symbolic making sense representations, the semantic nature of time, matter, information, it exists away from humans without humans. Okay, so a tree, if a tree falls in a forest, it does make a sound, even if no one hears it kind of thing. It does make a sound. Okay. Right? But, the, but the meaning, the idea of making sound of a tree, of, it, of all of that, that the meaning of mm -hmm. it, that also exists along with the tree itself. It's not just the sound that the tree makes, but the, the treeness, the meaning of a tree. Okay. The meaning of time, that a, that a tree grows, there's a before and an after. All of this is meaning. I know this is weird, right? I, I'm still with you so far. Okay, good, good. Well, this is what I mean by the semantic universe. And what is amazing to me that, at, you know, a couple hundred years ago, nobody believed in those pictures that I showed earlier of space-time, representations of space-time, representations of the microverse. We had different beliefs of what was real. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying, all I'm asking for is that everyone leaves their mind open to think of another invisible dimension. Time is invisible to us. We'll never feel it or see it. Right? We see the effects of it, but we believe it. I was going to say, I've heard you complain about time a few times. We know that time exists. 
What I'm trying to say is that semantics, Mm -hmm. meaning exists in the same sort of dimensional way, the same sort of very real way that time exists. So that's the purpose of these four lectures, I'm calling them. Because we all used to believe that there was another dimension, a, a dimension of meaning above, below, within and without this mundane meat reality Mm -hmm. that humans live in. And I hope to make you believe in that again. Okay.